Okay, so we are here for part two of phone coach. Sorry about that part one. But I busy that phone call. And it's car out, number 18, car out, 4736, or number 13, 46 north, and back to our north. For San Diego, 4936, or what, Purple Line? San Diego, 8821, 4 and 12, and West Coast Cards. Well, Purple Line is 5 and 24, 1 and 15, West Coast Cards. They are 46 and the third, San Diego's leading that one. We have Big Ten Network as some action here. We have 47 43 Nebraska League, Purdue with 720 going the fourth in the Big Ten Network. Wagner blowing out Merrimack here on the road, 70 49 with 656 to go. And Wofford is leading Samford 33 30 or 33 22 at the break. We have Tennessee Tech taking on UT Martin. Any in any minute here. That one is about to tip off, so. So let's go to the Big Ten Network. Our Purdue is taking on Nebraska. Purdue is 13 17 overall. And this is the 12th seed. Wow, Nebraska is the 5 seed. At nineteen ten. Time out. Right here, understanding that she was going to get by because she had the momentum and speed on that straight line drive to the bucket. And then right here, hey, another kick out. And this time you're gonna attack the closeout. That's probably the first assist by Markowski that wasn't a triple in this game. Hake making the proper read to attack the hip and get to the rack. Last play, Janae Terry picks up number four. She is on the bench right now. Shelly patient. Good bump off there by Swanson. Almost poked away by Ellis. Seven on the clock for Shelly. She'll pull up and knocks it down. It was the gooseneck on that one for me. Just stayed aggressive and then disrupted the footwork by Jones. And she's whistled for travel. A Purdue turnover. And look at the bench, including Allison Widener out for the season. Pumped for her squad. We'll just watch right here. Jazz Shelley picking and choosing her sweet spots. Got that one to go with the high release and follow through. And right there just got in the way. Disrupted the rhythm of the footwork and the ball handling by Jones, forcing her to travel and give it right back. Okay, look at Markowski down inside. That's right. She is working and gets the ball. And when the defense is sitting straight behind, you just have to feed. The post, whether uh, and again, whether she shoots it or not, is insignificant. She needs that touch. That's the proper place to put the basketball. Swanson finds an open lane in, uh, and Nisley will secure it. A foul though on the Huskers, going for that loose ball. The pot's two-hand push to the back. It was whistled for that foul, but look at Markowski right there, sizing up the defense. She has an advantage. If you're going to sit straight behind like Reynolds was, you make them pay. Get the ball to her. She had two players in her area, and it didn't matter whatsoever. She was able to pay it off. You get it to your first team, all Big Ten. Yep. She'll make it happen, even on the other side, igniting a fast break, though. Hake. And it's not Take by it any, oh, I'm sorry, Sloan, but it's not by any means necessary to get her the ball. But when she has an advantage like that, why isn't she touching the basketball? When she's your highest percentage shooter and leads your team in scoring. Shelly throws it over her head, draws the foul. And you see the two leaders of this team coming up with big plays. The Big Ten Basketball Tournament on Big Ten Network is presented by TIAA, the official retirement planning partner of the Big Ten.
Shelling to shoot with Nebraska on an 8 nothing run in the bonus. And Christy, they have slowly and steadily just chipped away at building this cushion. Yeah, no question. And they've stayed steady, and, and that's what you have to do, right? And, and like I like to say, sometimes you, you have to be like a duck on the water, right? On the top of the water, everything looks poised and composed, but underneath there's a lot of work going on, and that's what Nebraska's been able to do. They've been able to work their way to this lead. They've been able to close down what Purdue was doing really well to get one possession away from them. Swans in a little bit of a heat check there. Nebraska will take it. Let's see here, nice poise in the quarter court, slowly setting that screen. And all the way is White. She sees that seam and attacks right away. Well, the seam was created by Coley, setting that screen on that elbow and that foul line extended area. Gave her that avenue. Ellis, the crossover, so good at maneuvering through traffic. Can't get the assist that time, but paddles for the loose ball. She will be whistled for the foul, just her second. Let's go back to that last play. You see White making a read, Coley setting that nice screen, and then on the cross match, she was able to get by Reynolds with that extra speed. And Reynolds may be taller, but speed beats height nine times out of ten. Just right here, the cross match created by that screen. The ability to get down into the paint and finish off the window. It's the craftiness again, and you see it with White, who spent four years at Montana State, wanted to come to the Big Ten to test herself, to elevate herself, an important part of this team's rotation at the line, looking to create even more separation. Well, I know the transfer portal, everyone has their opinion on it, right? And I understand that, but what I love is the opportunity for players like White to be able to go up and challenge yourself. We've seen a lot of players playing down like an AAU and all that stuff and dominating kids two or three years younger and getting an ego boost and then getting a rude awakening when they are playing players at their age group. When you want to challenge yourself, you love to see that. Markowski is fouled. And for Terry, that is number five. She has fouled out with four minutes to play. Four points, 11 rebounds, three assists. She is someone who has put in years into this program at Illinois before. She will sit on the bench the final four minutes. And that's tough for the senior, yeah. right? She knows her role for this team and I'm sure is disappointed. Okay, so Nebraska, looks like they got a little bit of the lead brewing on Purdue here with 3.40 to go. Let's take a break here. Let's go to, let's go to the West Coast Conference. Here, let's go to Pepperdine. Kicking on San Diego. In the West Coast at the West Coast Conference tournament. There's also Samford taking on Wofford and Tennessee Tech right now is taking a new team on in the quarters. Yeah, I can show you as well. Here, um, there are some other ones at five Eastern as well. There is George Washington, Steve Lewis, and the Ten Center. Duke, George Tech, Duke, and the ACC tournament. We got Howard and Norfolk State in the MIAC featured in the game at East Penn U. And you have the Burb, and then, and then at MAC. 
we're more mostly today it's gonna to be focused on the quarterfinals and like the second round the first round of these tournaments it's like you know mainly but there will be some like action you'll see some top teams like Belmont Drake squeeze in there her fair fail you know Let's see, like some top team. You know, top. Let's see, probably some top Big West competition. Hawaii, you see, rank up probably Lixton. So, mainly focus on the conference tournaments. I know. This, but there will be some mixed in. But next week, there will be Monday through Thursday, the Whip Brown I'm showing you then, will be all conference tournaments. Because there's no regular season for any conference time. Actually, let's go back to Nebraska. Purdue at Nebraska. Interesting game. 2.38 to go. You know, we'll take you to actually San Diego Pepperdine a little bit late. This one is going to get interesting and close. Purdue might pop the upset. And stun Nebraska's. Hope you know to make it to maybe the semis, possibly maybe to get at large in sea lakes. I mean, the rest might have to go to the BYT. It's get like be like a one or two or something in the WNIT. The WBIT, excuse me. The WBIT might be like a one seat. Get snug and then sea lakes. It's the sauce. Stevenson battling for that loose ball. It is a foul. And Robin Fralick, the new head coach at Michigan State, has done a masterful job getting them the four seed this tournament. Just watch it. Having a game. I love to see that bold spirit competing at a high level. It just, oh, it just thrills me. I love to see that. Oh. And an offensive foul on the Boilers. There's no quit in this Purdue team, even though that was a turnover. I mean, Katie Gerald knows it. She has done a, a tremendous job back at her alma mater, coaching. 